Carl here from All Media Reviews. Here to do Kevin Gilbert tracks number 10. And as mentioned before, it's not the final one, even though the album Thud, Thud tracks rather, number 10. Uh, you know, I'm going to do another, uh, at least, I might do a few videos, shorter videos, about the, uh, the other stuff. But it is the final track on the standard version of Thud. Song for a Dead Friend. I remember I said friend. Song for a Dead Friend, um, uh, the tenth track uh, on Thud. So, yeah, there's whatever there is. There's um, five versions. So the standard version. Um, let me get my notes out. Of course, need to have those. Um, get this stuff ready here. Yeah. Okay. And that version's five minutes and this version's five minutes and fifty six seconds, um, <clears throat> and then um, this is of course a challenge. The twentieth anniversary book has two as a uh, what's known as song for Michael demo, which is four minutes and twenty eight seconds. It's shorter, and then it has what's known as the guitar mix, song for a dead friend guitar mix, and then. Then there's two versions, two more versions. Um, there's one on Thud Acoustic, um, just known as Song for a Dead Friend, Thud Acoustic, which came out, it was a couple of years ago, was it 2022 or 2023? Maybe 2023. Um, and then there's a new version on the most written, a few months ago, Thud Alternate, um, which is known as um, The Piano Mix. So, um, so just talking about the song itself first. Um, song for a Dead Friend is the last song. It, it ends this album. It, it's fitting in a lot of ways of the kind of style and to end this kind of record in a lot of ways because it is stripped down. It is. I mean, this Thud compared to Toy Matinee, compared to even Tuesday Night Music Club and Giraffe especially, even the stuff, energy, anything, most of other, rest of, most of the things Kevin Gilbert had done was an attempt to do something a little simpler, a little more stripped down. Now, it ultimately ended up being still pretty layered, but it's, it doesn't come across as super layered. And I think on this record, Song for a Dead Friend is probably the most stripped down of all the songs on this record. I mean, the, the other ballads like T for One, The Tears of Audrey, even All Fall Down in a Way, uh, When You Give Your good Love to Me, Joy, to, they're all kind of, they're all acoustic and they're all have elements of a ballad, but this is the most ballad-like and most stripped down track um and it's a song that on this record i think most people that have really only heard this and maybe Tony and a aren't that familiar with kevin gilbert or even just talk about this record it's the song that they praise a lot of people praise the most now it's not a lot of people i have a different feeling on that don't necessarily but it's the most moving and they talk here about kevin gilbert's story about how he you know, end up dying in an accident or whatever, how it, the auto erotic asphyxiation and this whole, like, struggles with the industry, everything with Sheryl Crow that occurred. It's like this guy was so, like, depressing and somber. It's sort of fitting his most depressing work ever. Um, and I, I would lean toward one track specifically, which I kind of felt like when I got into Kevin Gilbert, I was moved a little more by, I was connected more by, I'm talking about Blank Page, which originally was a bonus track on the Toy Matinee Special Edition and then ended up on, I think it was on Bolts, one of the, one of the compilations, Nuts or Bolts. To me, that, I, I felt like I was more connected, I felt more um, melancholy and sympathy on that track, as opposed to Song for a Dead Friend. Even though, grand scheme of, thing, grand scheme of things and the subject matter, Song for a Dead Friend is, is much more, a much more sad story song inspired piece for presumably it was a friend obviously of Kevin's Kevin Gilbert's that passed away and of course in the lyrics it refers to Danny I always thought he said Denny for the longest time I always hear him singing Denny but it's Danny like Daniel or Dan Danny um but as the demos translate the, I think the, the actual friend of Kevin Gilbert that it was written for or written about was named as Michael um but the details on that, I really can't elaborate too greatly. I mean, my memory about the inspiration behind... I'd have to look in the Kevin Gilbert group, maybe on Facebook. There's been discussion about that more, about um, 
who this friend of his that he grew up with, he got to know, that passed away went around the time he was writing Thud, or maybe it was before that. It could have been in the 80s at some point. He wrote it for named Michael. But So, all right, so I'll get into it. The standard Thud ver version, you know, I mean, it's... It's it's still sad. I mean, it's, I like a lot of the lyrics, a lot of the words, but it comes across initially as almost like a eulogy for his friend. Um, it's like a almost like he's Kevin's feeling guilty. He wants to write for something for him. He's got regrets that he didn't do for him. But lines like um, to make he you allowed me to make me see the foolishness of paragraphs that were better as one word. I mean, that is such a great line. <laughs> You should have just wrote one word. You said way too much, and I am so guilty of that being like word salads, being very chatty and wordy, and I wish I, I could totally feel like that would be advice for myself. Um, but it was probably advice for, you know, whatever he, he would think his friend said to him. Um, you know, and then you just might go go see your sad mistake because life has more to give than what you take. Um what you take. I always found that grammatically, he just put that in there. It didn't that, and then a line later, felt like the gra the grammar wasn't. It was just like a necessary. He couldn't come up with a better phrase. But um, what he's talking about the sad mistake. What is that mistake? I I don't know. Like what the sad mistake? Uh, I might see your sad mistake. Maybe he took his own life. I don't know. And that that's what it is referring to. Um, Danny, my friend, forgive me if I break our rule but I think it's overdue. What's the rule again? <laughs> Him and his friend had some kind of rule, kind of some sort of pact, some sort of like thing they swore by, something that they, you know, agreed upon. Um, I don't know. Uh, it could be any number of things, maybe. Um, maybe not to, you know, go after the other's girlfriend or something, or I, or just, they're always, we're going to be loyal to each other about, you know, you know, not, you know, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. There's many that could be inferred. Many different ideas. Um, then he refers to we were Captain Jim and Billy, the superhuman crime avenging twins. Who are Captain Jim and Billy? I, I'm, I think of like the Wonder Twins and the Super Super Friends, or like Batman and Robin, or or some superheroes, or maybe it's a fictional thing that him and his friend Michael or Danny Michael, when they were kids, they played like superheroes and or like they they went they did sort of group they were it was a game they played it was some kind of kids game or um thing they acted out maybe it was a board game or a uh i don't know i i think of that referring to something in cinema or comics or it thinks it sounds like something from a comic like a superhero or a comic um like a, a vigilante kind of thing but um because there's no one to congratulate my sins my sins that again again i i feel like like, the two of them, you know, did certain things, and um, uh, they were like a team, and they're not together anymore. He's kind of, Kevin's feeling really sad and guilty about that. Like, you know, I need someone there to congratulate me for whatever I do. That, someone I can talk to for advice to just confide with, just to ask about. It's like, um, that really would be my, my side. Uh, a very, it's a very, you know, he's talking about a friend, a song for a dead friend, a friend that he had a very strong connection with, a kinship. At least the lyrics suggest that. Uh, the chapters that I skipped, I'm going to have to read again. Like, you know, whatever. He's chapters in the book that he just didn't read thoroughly. He regrets that. Um, things that he didn't fully understand. Now he is after his friend is gone. Maybe his friend was a writer. Maybe. Um, yeah, this song song comes across very much like a confession. And then the line, the line, and there's a lot of pages at the very end. This may be my favorite line, the saddest line in the, in the song. There's a lot of pages missing from my book. You had more to give than what I took. Again, the grammar feels weird, what I took, the whole mistake and take, book and took, but um, I love that line talking about um, there's more work to do. Why did you have to go? We got we got more we got more things to write. We got to tell our story. Our story's not over yet. Um, that part has often hit me. That part, I think that, and that sounds almost the most sad in that part, so. So, yeah, I mean, I like this song. I've, I mean, much of Thud, like Joytown, a lot of these other songs on Thud, goodness gracious, the lyrics are very much a very important part of it all. It's the tone of it also is, is very important. But the lyrics very much are a big part of why people are moved by it and reach by it and, and look at it as so they revere it at times. And I understand that to a degree. Um, 
So moving on to the uh, other versions. So now on the 20th anniversary, you have the demo. And I probably only listened to the demo a few times. Song for Michael, the demo. Um, unlike, I didn't even talk to you about the instrumentation. It's mostly acoustic guitar and Kevin's voice, but there's some piano. This is more piano. like, And this, this is like a complete opposite in terms of tone. It's a shorter, it's only four minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, the, the song for Michael demo. Um, he, of course, refers to Michael, my friend, instead of Danny, my friend. Um, but it's in, like, a major key. The whole song, the whole this whole demo is in the major key. It's kind of celebratory. It's it's very ironic sounding. Uh, even though the lyrics are basically the same. Um, but the tone of it is, it's, it's almost like, like, I've been to funerals for different cultures, like, Went to some African American feelings and they celebrate the life. It's almost in that sense, like this they're celebrating Michael's life or he's thinking about his memories and celebrating in some ways. Um, it's also faster at points. Um, there it sounds like at one point, I think during the second verse, yeah, some synths or maybe it's like Mellotron that comes in. Um, but then at some point I'm listening to it, I'm kind of feeling like with these lyrics that are so dark, so like sad and confession, like it's not fully sincere. The sincerity kind of started to lose me a little bit, but um, but I think when actually he goes into this, the last chorus, when you tear it down, the vocals are really good. I, he's really reaching on that that particular verse. I think it was like the second time he sang the chorus. When you tear it down, you know, it looks more ragged, uh, but it's still in a major key, but it's more dramatic and. Um, on other parts of the song, yeah. And it just, that's the thing about, I think mostly this, this being a happier major key, the tone, and it's very piano driven. That's the biggest thing I got from the, the demo song for Michael. So, um, so then the guitar mix. Um, so you hear Kevin counting in, it's six minutes and 20 seconds, the guitar mix, the song for Dead Friend. You hear him counting at the beginning, um, just acoustic guitar. So this, I don't believe, if I'm not mistaken on my notes, if there's any piano. Um, there's like the sustained synth though, a little bit. So, I mean, it's mostly guitar, but there's a little synth you can, sustained part. I don't know if it's guitar or synthesizer. Um, but the guitar is mixed higher, go figure. Um, and then it's like during the second verse, I think, what sounds like fretless bass. It might be another acoustic guitar that's like used with a, like, where it's, it's in some sort of, I don't know if it's a pitch bending thing, but I think it might be a fretless bass. Um, or using some another chord with a kudzi car in the chord. Yeah, when you tear it down. Kevin's a bit louder than on the standard. He's, you know, singing a little louder, a little higher into the mic. Um, he sings, he says the phrase, what you take. He repeats that a couple times, at least one extra time. Um, like, what you take, then what you take, what you take, he says. Um... Then he adds the word and. I really cared about you and I didn't know I could love a friend as much as I love you. Um, I mean, it's just subtle. I'm not sure. I mean, just looking at what the lyrics show and I was listening to it, it didn't, it didn't the word and wasn't in there um, on the lyrics online. Um, but then he ends up holding some of the notes a little longer, the vocal lines. When I tear it down, it seems like he, he, he the word tear and... Um, there's one other word in the, in the lyrics that he holds on a slightly more. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, 20 seconds. I'm talking maybe three to five, six more seconds. It seems like it goes on for a little bit. Um, when I tear, yeah, when I tear it down, but it looks more fake, but I can't let it be because, uh, then there's a lot of pages. There's one other word that he, he stretches out besides tear, uh, in that last, uh, that last chorus. Um, but that's about it. I mean... Overall, the performance is pretty similar to the standard version, other than these these subtle things with the guitar and the mix, for the most part. Um, so then, okay, moving on to the thud acoustic. Now, I, you know, again, I listened to this, and I hadn't listened to the guitar mix. This version is very similar to the guitar mix. I, I don't know how much differences there are, but there's a lot of similarities. I thought I thought I was I was doing a double take. Like, is this? Am I playing the right track? Even though one of them is six minutes and fifteen seconds, that's the this version, the the, the acoustic version. But um, you know, it's what did I write down? Guitar and piano mostly driven by acoustic guitar. 
Uh, you hear that little bed of synths sort of toward the beginning. It might be another guitar. It might be a synth. Uh, the what you take part is repeated. Um, and, you know, the guitar sounds slightly mixed higher and Kevin's vocals. Yeah, I mean... And then he delays the last phrase than what I took. That's about the only thing I heard different. Otherwise, I really don't know what the difference between the guitar mix and the thud alternate. Um, I thought, I thought I'm using the wrong one. Thud, the thud acoustic. I was holding up the wrong CD. I really don't know what the difference is other than those couple slightly, like that part where he says what I took, then what I took at the end. Um... There's really not much, and maybe the mix. The mix might be slightly different, but um, otherwise, I think, I think he recorded it and cut it twice. And the 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 version that's on the acoustic was the second one that he cut. He chopped up like five seconds, and that was it. Um, otherwise, I think they're the same. I really, I, I would not be surprised to learn that they're it's the same the same performance. Um, so then the thud alternate, which I was just holding up a little while ago, the last version, piano mix. Um, very piano driven, go figure by the name. Um, you know, piano mix of Song for a Dead Friend. Um, he holds the piano notes out longer, I noticed. Um, the, the sustains. The big thing about this version, though, I think, even though Song for a Dead Friend and all these versions are, is a very slow song, it's a ballad, it's a very slow and stripped down song for it's very slow. I think he end up doing this one even slower. It's, it's, even though the length is only 5 minutes and 50 seconds, the tempo is just even slower. So, um, yeah, he holds the piano notes out, like the sustain pedal out on many on many occasions on it. Um, the vocals are slower. He's kind of plodding on even slower. You know, it's almost like he was just trying to figure out how, like, how to get the words out, you know, to emphasize the gentle, sort of careful, delicate nature of the song. Um, and then his voice is mixed is mixed even higher. And there's a point that almost sounds like it's a cappella where it's you hear the piano, but it's there's a big difference in how high the vocals sound that, like they're mixed. And it's clear, you know, it's he's just closer to the microphone at points on many of especially the last half of this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just that's you you may as well call this the thud alternate piano slower mix or highly slow mix because that's the big thing that I get from this from the version on uh, thud alternate so so that's it for for song for a dead friend that's it for the standard thug track list um, you know um like I, I mentioned I I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some video probably next week I'm, my intention is maybe to do some shorter videos for each one of these there's the, the the three versions of cashmere that are um that i have that i know of um at least three may, there may only be two there's one uncontrolled mix and there's two there's one on nuts and one on the stu on the, the anniversary so uh, actually there's four because i actually have the the thud bonus ep uh the cat so i actually could but I, I don't know if there's gonna be a difference i'm not even sure if those two versions are different the one on nuts and the one on the anniversary uh, and then there's Waking the Sun, which is on Bolts and the, the Anniversary. It's an instrumental version. And then there's Until I Get Her Back, um, which uh, there's a version on Nuts. And then and that's not even including um, Until I Get You Back. It's different. Third, third Anniversary. And then there's Miss Broadway and Big Heart. Um, so I think I'll do is probably end up doing a shorter video for each one of these. And then there's two tra only two or three tracks to talk about. Like two but I, I didn't. I thought I announced it once. The belief is, whenever that uh, I'm thinking 25 years, that uh, the Shaming of the True um, multi disc comes out, it would be 25 years next year in 2025. I will look to do something similar to this whole series of each track on the Shaming of the True that we get, and a lot of the other ones that we are, we have not heard. I don't know. There's so many versions of the Shaming of the True. Um, you know, I've got this. I mean, there's. There's the, the box and the, you know, you know, this is the only one that has the extra stuff, I suppose, other than, um, yeah, pretty much. You could take staring into nothing, but, um, I don't know. I, I'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but, um, that given I, I, I have really enjoyed doing these. I know, you know, a lot of people haven't necessarily been as into these Kevin Gilbert thud dissection track videos, but, um, I, 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 I have, and I feel like just for documentation sake and for research sake, 
it, it would be worth doing that also for the shaming of the true at the point that we get the multi-disc um but um i just one or two other quick things i'm gonna do i mean i want to get back to the albums of the year of course 1987 um but i want to do movies all-time movies list the minnesota minnesota prog list the, the band the the bands i don't get the bands and artists the, all those are hopefully in the pipeline um and i'm working on i'm trying to work on that progressive art rock list so um, a lot of stuff i'm still working on um given time and i've got some ruse like the steve martin i'll probably do that later today the steve martin documentary i watched recently so but thank you for watching and we'll see you next time Thank you.